Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about VoiceThread. So VoiceThread, and I'm going to scroll down, here I am in Blackboard, I'm going to scroll down so you see what a VoiceThread assignment looks like. VoiceThread is an online tool that allows faculty and students to share and comment on images, video, audio files, documents, PDFs, using a microphone or a written feature. As you'll see from my screen, um, it's integrated into Blackboard. Many of us use our institution subscribe to Blackboard, but it's also part of other course management systems. So if you're using another system like Moodle or Angel, it's probably integrated into that as well. So the difference here is that as opposed to a regular assignment, if you've created a regular assignment in Blackboard, that's really best for written assignments. And the feedback part of doing a, of working with a Blackboard assignment can be a little clunky. VoiceThread allows uh, students to upload their visual content, so it's great for the fine arts, for photography, for graphic design classes, and then for students to comment on each other's work. So here's my uh, VoiceThread assignment. And in this case, this class is Social Media for the Arts. So students were deploying five posts live on three platforms. And then they were going to, in terms of the assignment, they would upload both a link to the live post so we could see it in an actual, uh, on the actual platform. And they also uploaded screenshots, which is what we use for commenting. And that tends to be best if something is going to be online. So the way I access the content that they created, I'm going to show you that first so you get a sense of what we're trying to do here with VoiceThread. And then I'm going to kind of backtrack and show you how to get there or how to do that yourself. So I'm going to double click or click there on the voice thread and you're going to get this redirection. Keeping in mind that voice thread is an add-on, um, sometimes the interface and how it uh, works with Blackboard can be a little bit clunky. So in this case, I'm going to see all of the voice threads that were created for this class. And I can scroll through um, and show you some examples. So I'm going to go to sort of early in the class, uh, which is at the bot, populates at the bottom, and just click on one of the voice threads that people created. So just a couple things you'll see. You'll see that um, each of these uh, items with a little square next to it, that is called a voice thread. It means that a student has uploaded a collection or of images or PDFs all together, almost like a folder. Um, and you'll see both the title that they gave the, the a voice thread or folder. I think it's easier to think of them as a folder. You'll see their name, you'll see the date, and you'll actually see how many people have viewed or commented on the and, and or commented on the voice thread. So I'm going to click here on this voice thread. And so the student has done the uploading and this is what we see both as a faculty member and a student. One thing I think it's important to note is that this is me, my comments are included here, and I think about VoiceThread just like I think about an online or an in-person critique. So in a face-to-face -face environment, uh, students hear what is said to the other students, and similarly, the same happens on VoiceThread. If there's uh, information that I want to make the student aware of that I don't feel comfortable sharing with a whole group, I will probably do that in using another format. In, actually, when I use Grade Center, I'll do that. But I'm not going to talk about that. Now I'm going to talk about what we do in VoiceThread. So in VoiceThread, the student has uploaded um, both the screenshot of their design as well as a link to that design. And I'm not going to click on that because I'm going to get another window and it'll be confusing. But if you trust me there, the link is that it shows up there. And when you click on it, you'll see the live post. This is really important for those of you who might be doing um, web projects or projects where the content ends up online. And so we see the screenshots here. And what you'll see, and I think this is something that's important to note, 
is that the author, the subject student, um, in this case Leanne, who created this, we were a little unsure what she had designed and what she had reposted because part of the assignment allowed students to do some reposting. And so she came back and clarified that using the comment tool. And in this case, the comment tool shows up when you click down here in the middle. And in this case, what she did was she typed a comment and then saved it. So now we'll see in this post that we have Leanne's comment and then we have the comment I just created. Now, if I'm not, if, if I made a mistake or that wasn't what I intended, you'll see that I can actually get rid of that comment. We'll just do that now. So we can go through and we can see the work that uh, she uploaded and she clarified when she did a cross posting from another organization and when she did the design work. I think one of the things that's really great about this format is that the feedback comes in a, the, the feedback is really clear and I'm just going to show, I'm going to go back to the beginning and show you what my original feedback was for, um, for Leanne. And, and then, so this is Leanne and then we know that students commented as well. I'll get to that in a minute. Hey Leanne, so I'm giving you feedback on your posting through VoiceThread and the audio version of this so that I can actually go through the posts and give you some feedback that way. So first, so you'll see that I introduce, in the beginning of the class, I introduce students to just how the critique situation is going to work in VoiceThread. And I do do that at the beginning of feedback for every student for their first assignment. Um, the way I did that was I clicked here in the middle and I did the audio record. Okay, and so I recorded my audio comment and you'll see it, this is what you see. You see that there's a flashing red light. That's how you know you're recording. You can also draw and I find this really useful. Um, you know, I can sh highlight particular text. Um, my drawing skills with this pencil aren't so hot, but I can say, you know, this identity needs to be worked on a little bit more or whatever it may be. I can highlight things that are working really well. And then when I stop recording, it gives me the chance to decide whether or not to upload or not. It will actually start previewing so you'll hear yourself. Now keep in mind I was just on one image. I can do the audio recording as I'm flipping through. And when the student listens to the audio recording, they will actually have the experience of seeing what I commented on as I was going through their work. So it's not like you need to make separate recordings for each image that somebody uploads. You can do one audio recording for the whole thing. So as I said, I did the feedback here and then Two other students did, Emma and Joelle, did feedback for Leanne on this project as well. The way I tend to structure the feedback is that students pick who they do the feedback on because sometimes people don't, um, don't upload the work on time, as some of you may know or have experienced in face-to-face -face as well. So that can be an issue, and I just say make sure the person doesn't ha already have two comments and comment on two people's work who don't have two comments. And I found that that has worked out and been pretty fair um, when I've used VoiceThread. I will say that while some of the integration of VoiceThread and the course management software can be a little clunky, I found VoiceThread to be very effective in terms of students listening to and internalizing the feedback and making the changes and found it so successful that for comments on final projects, even in face-to-face -face classes, I use VoiceThread as part of the way that I um, give that final feedback. So I'm just gonna show you, this is what it looks like if one of the students... Um... Hi, Leanne. Um, just got done looking through all of your content, and I really like what you've done so far. So that's sort of the beginning of the students giving, con uh, giving feedback. 
Just like in a face-to-face -face class, you'll notice that the first thing Emma did was talk about something positive. And so that can be a little bit of a challenge in the beginning of an online class to get students to give the kind of feedback that they give in a face-to-face -face class. And so I will usually provide a rubric of um, how to do feedback in an online situation and what we're looking for. And then I'll provide them some feedback about whether or not they, you know, went, got over the I like it part and then got into kind of the meat of the critique. And I would say, just like a face-to-face -face class, that takes a little bit of time um, for students to get that so that by the end of the class, students are much more willing to give that sort of harsher feedback um, that the other student finds more useful. So I just wish, was going to show you a few examples. Um, and I would say that the other reason, if you have a class of mixed students in terms of art and design students and non-art and design students, it's also really important that you give some criteria around giving that feedback. So that's a little bit about what VoiceThread looks like as you're going through VoiceThread um, as an instructor. One of the things that's a little bit annoying, at least in Blackboard, is that to get back to your to the shell of your Blackboard course, it's actually best to go up here. If you click here or the back button, you end up just at the beginning of what you see in terms of um, all of your courses listed. So I'll just click back here. You'll see that my VoiceThread course is populated here in my week six content. By creating the VoiceThread um, assignment directly in Blackboard, you are it, it does um, automatically populate into Grade Center, which makes grading and keeping a tally of grades uh, much easier. It also means that students will get the same kind of notification of assignment being due the same way they would for a written assignment. So that's a little bit about just what you see with Blackboard um, and VoiceThread and how they integrate together. I don't use the other course management softwares, but I think that it's probably pretty similar because VoiceThread's been added to most of them. And just as a recap, VoiceThread is a great tool to have students upload and then do both peer-to-peer -peer critique and faculty-to-student critique on their work, and then um, get that feedback in an asynchronistic way, meaning you don't have to all be together. That's a challenge, particularly for those of us where students who were in face-to-face -face have now gone home and might be in a different time zone or traveling. So this allows us to do it when we're not all together. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to actually create a new VoiceThread assignment and what that looks like. Okay, thanks and stay tuned for part two.